The battle between men and women is a battle that's been going on since the beginning of time, and will continue to wage on until we make convincing enough cyborg women with programmable fetish settings and an inability to judge. But until that glorious day, we're stuck with them. So to pass the time until then, let's talk about why Ducky, and indeed all men, will be replacing their girlfriends with the Scarlett Johansson Sockmatic 5000. <laughs> When I was a younger man, I used to hate fake tan on women. I hated it because women in their late teens and early twenties hadn't quite worked out all the kinks yet. So when you were chatting them up on a night out, you'd spend the whole time while exchanging flirtatious pleasantries, wondering if they were wearing too much fake tan or they were just some sort of Middle Eastern with a ridiculously bright smile, and avoiding their hand gestures because tan has a weird reaction with hands and it just makes it look like their toilet paper ripped mid-wipe. But the ignorance they displayed towards fake tan didn't end there. Sometimes you'd get lucky and manage to convince one of them to come back to your house to play a game of hide the sausage. So as they tend to do, things begin to get hot and heavy in the bedroom, and clothes start flying off left and right as you frantically search for the best hiding spot, all the while thinking that, sure, the tan is a bit much, but I bet she looks unreal under all these clothes, like some sort of sun-kissed goddess statue, some beautiful copper sports car and you get to explore every crevice. But that's not what really happens. Because you see, to my disappointment, most of the time women didn't tan themselves all over, just bits that they had on display, legs and arms and whatnot, leaving great white untanned patches of skin that made them look like some sort of flag for some unknown nation. So when you did get her kit off, she looked less like Halle Berry and more like Nemo. But you got this far, and hey, it's nothing that can't be remedied by a flick of a light switch in 20 of the best seconds you've ever given anybody. Now at this point you're thinking, job done, right? What more could there be to this? Well, after she leaves in the morning and you go to jump back into bed, on your way back to the bedroom you'll notice you have a patch of oddly coloured skin. You think, did I spill something on myself? Did I have a reaction to something I ate? Hmm, weird. I'll see if it washes off. Huh, it does. What could it be? Oh well, I'll figure it out later. Back to bed for me. So you enter your room and you're immediately stopped in your tracks by what you see. And you realise what that stain was on your skin. Not only was she wearing fake tan, she was wearing cheap fake tan. Now as some of you might know, or some of you will come to find out, cheap fake tan rubs off. So now you've just walked into stained sheets, walls and clothes formerly known as your bedroom. Now known as the crime scene in which somebody used a shotgun to violently interfere with an umpa lumpa. <laughs> Were you ever out with your woman on a night out and she was looking gorgeous? She's got the nice dress, the sexy high shoes, a flurry of fake aesthetics. Nails, eyelashes, hair colour, skin, smell, makeup, the whole shebang. And even though you know it's all smoke and mirrors, you can't help but bite your bottom lip and mutter a soft under your voice. Oh, fuck. Us fellas are predictable beings, so as you might imagine we'd spend most of our night thinking I can't wait to give this girl the pumping she deserves. So the night goes on as it usually does. She goes dancing for 5 hours straight, only stopping to drink or gather the girls to go to the bathroom because the type of dress she's got on was designed for somebody who doesn't urinate and she needs somebody to help her strip in the cubicle in order to pee. And I spend my night in the smoking area with the boys making dick jokes, telling exaggerated stories and occasionally all stopping and staring like newborns every time somebody in the group points out somebody who's remotely attractive and scantily clad. So as the night begins to draw to a close, your missus will leave the dance and reunite with you, which will remind you how unbelievable she's looking tonight. And you think to yourself, we must head home, and bang at once. But as soon as you leave the club, cracks start to form in the embodiment of beauty you're craving to ravish. Not all at once, but gradually. First thing to go is those sexy heels. She'll pop them off and begin to carry them. Which is fine, sure, she's been able to dance for the last five hours, but the five minute walk home, that's a bit too much to ask for, am I right? But it's fine, right? She can put them back on when you get in. So no real loss. So when you make it home, she heads straight for the bedroom. Surely she's picked up on your eagerness to get her into bed, and you follow her up shortly thereafter. But when you walk into that bedroom, something has changed. Your missus is no longer the Greek goddess you're gunning to give a good green knob into. The makeup, the dress, the hair, everything is gone. All you see is a sickly looking sleepy creature staring back at you. Because you see, that show wasn't for you. No, no. That show she was putting on was for everybody else. And now you're standing in the doorway shouting at this pajama golem, demanding to know what he has done with your beautiful girlfriend. <laughs> So every now and again as a man you'll be asked if you want to watch a movie with a woman, which in most cases is fine by me, gives me a good excuse to watch the latest Pixar film without seeming like a weirdo, but watching a movie is somewhat of an inaccurate description. Kinda. You see, you'll be watching the movie, and she'll be IMD being the actors because she knows one of them from somewhere and snapchatting all her friends. She doesn't want somebody to watch the movie with. She wants somebody to tell her all about the bit she's missing while she's occupied with her fucking phone. Now sometimes she'll talk you into watching a horror movie with her. God knows why, because as you know a horror movie is all about the scary scenes putting the shits up you. But as soon as the scary scene comes on, she covers up and looks away from the scary monster, axe murderer or ghost with a deep loathing for furniture and bedclothes. Ah, fucking chairs. But when the movie's over, she has the cheek to ask you to accompany her into another room, leaving on every light in the house as you go. Why? Because she's scared. But scared from what? She didn't see the scary bits because she was hiding behind her fucking hands. Wanna get some takeaway later? Sure. What kind of takeaway do you fancy? I don't mind. <laughs> 
You're out without your missus and you bump into somebody you haven't seen in ages. You chat for a few minutes and part ways. And the next day, while mid-interrogation in a game I lovingly call, I'm checking to see if you cheated on me last night, but I don't want to seem like a paranoid, so I'll smile while asking you very specific questions. And we won't know what I'm doing here, but neither of us will say it because we like to keep the illusion that we are better than other couples. Game. It's a working title. Now, during the interrogation, you mention, hey, I bumped into Joe last night. She'll ask, oh, how is he? I'll say he's good. He says hi. She'll say, is he still going out with Michelle? I'll say, I think so. I didn't ask. How was his mother after the operation? I'll say, I don't know. I didn't ask. She'll say, well, is he still working in IT? I'll say, I don't know. I didn't ask. You see where I'm going with this? Look, ladies, let me explain something. When two men meet up for the first time in ages, it's as if no time has elapsed since we last spoke. Unlike women, we don't hold anger over how long it's been. We don't carry a grudge because the other man hasn't spoken to us in over three years. So as a result, we don't feel the need or desire to catch up because neither of us really care what the other one is doing and we'll probably not see each other for another three years. So why bother spending in time catching up when we're just going to do it all over again? It's best just to spend the time enjoying some utter shite talk, sex, elaborate drinking stories, and fill the remaining time with calling each other gay in a variety of different ways. We're not built like women. Two men can talk for hours and not gain a single slice of personal information about each other. Women can spend 10 minutes talking on a phone with somebody they haven't spoken to in ages, and you'd ask, How's Marie? Well, her mother's been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. She thinks her husband's going to divorce her and she's suffering from chronic depression, sleep deprivation, and she's put on 20 pounds. <laughs> They can share a monumental amount of information, years of information, in a minute amount of time. Which brings me to a very important point. How come when I ask my missus, how was your day, one day, a single few hours, it takes her five times longer to tell me that than it took her and Marie to cover five fucking years? Wanna see a movie later? Sure. What do you wanna see? I don't mind. <laughs> The question as old as time itself is which hurts more, childbirth or being kicked in the bollocks? Well allow me to put this to bed once and for all. It's being kicked in the balls. I suppose I'll elaborate before my comment section turns into a 70-30 split civil war. Okay, so let's address the women's arguments. First up, that old chestnut of trying to push a watermelon through the hole the size of a lemon. But ladies, that's not necessarily true, is it? That lemon size hole isn't a fixed size. It can stretch. If you don't believe me, you obviously haven't been searching the same videos I have. All I'm saying is give me a bucket of lube and two good men and I'll open that bad boy up good and proper. Secondly, not all women have to endure childbirth. Roughly 28% of women choose to remain childless, which as near as makes no difference. One billion women who'll never have to experience that pain. And I can guarantee you every single man watching this video or indeed in existence has had these knockers knocked at least twice this year alone. That's not even taking into account guys who have kids, dogs or anything else that likes to target your love dangles at every opportunity. And thirdly, and this one is the final nail in the coffin. Women plan for children. Women say things like, I'd like to eventually have kids one day, or I've always wanted to be a mammy. No man has, is, or will attempt to pursue being kicked in the balls. No man has ever thought to himself, aw, I'd love a hard kick in the knackers in nine months time, or I've always wanted to care for swollen, aching trouser stones. And I think it's for that reason alone, being kicked in a spunk bunkers is much worse than having a child. Women ask for it, men don't, and I think the fear of pain alone is proof. Hey, let's go away somewhere today. Sounds good, where do you want to go? I don't mind. As men, there's a few things we hold dear and are somewhat sensitive about, mostly sex related. Take the size and the use of our plunge plunger. We can be very touchy about having the size or power of our love staff questioned, or mocked. I don't know the psychology behind it, but it's pretty universal amongst men. When we're with a woman that's been with a guy, or 12, there's primarily two things we truly care about. It's not their feelings, it's not their well-being, and it's not even how we make them feel. We're focused on seemingly less important aspects. What we want to hear is we fuck them better than anybody has ever or will ever, and that our womb room is bigger than our exes. It's a weird statement, but the fellas out there know. When we fuck a woman well, I mean give them a good <sighs> scene to. That energy we possess is not from any passion or lust or overwhelming arousal. It's from the most powerful motion of all. Spite. We're not fucking her. We are fucking the memories of their past partners. We are dicking every fond memory of any love pump she has ever received. And we're pounding all those out of her, replacing them with fond memories of our Kong Dong. But all that male insecurity being said, that doesn't plague our mind all the time, or even much at all. If somebody said to us, our pants are looking a bit loose, we don't immediately associate that as a slight against our rogering Roger. We assume, as anybody naturally would, they're referring to the fit of our pants. If I asked another man why he wore briefs instead of boxers, he'd know, and rightfully so. I'm asking because he's a dickhead and not because I'm assuming his cucumber is a bit more of a pickle. These things you can just say to a man without worrying he'll do a backflip in an attempt to pull an insult out of a mundane statement. But you can't do that with the ladies though, can you? abso fucking lutely not. Because due to some strange psychological abnormality, women actively pursue the art of drawing insults from nowhere. So you'll be sat on a couch with her leg across yours, and you'll say something completely innocent like, babe, would you mind moving your foot? My leg is starting to go dead. Now at this point, things get a little confusing. 
Basically, all out hell is about to break loose. And what'll start it is, she'll translate what you said to her, and what you, the person who said it, what you meant by it. But you're thinking ducky, you just asked her to move her leg. What's the problem? No, you fools. What I've done is I've called her fat in 15 different languages, slapped the cake out of her hand while making oinking sounds in her face, and after she started crying I used her fat greasy tears to keep the fire going. That's exactly what she has just seen me do. They're just so sensitive, to the point that it makes men say some crazy shit. Like your missus will point out another skinnier woman on the street or TV or wherever, and ask you if she's pretty. And we say this, no she's too skinny for my taste. Too skinny for my tastes? Men don't fucking have tastes. We'd get up in a gust of wind if we could find purchase, but we can't tell them that. Otherwise, we'd wake up the following morning to find our insecurities have gone, with the help of a sharp knife. But you know what isn't gone? That subscribe button, yay, seemingly non-cringy segue. Mm. So that's the video. I've been Ducky. Good luck.